slope development models have been propounded by a number of geomorphologists. For example, the slope degradation model by W.M. Davis. You might be aware of the Davisian cycle of erosion in which he proposed that there are three stages in the cycle of erosion and he also presented the concept of trio, trio means structure, process and stage which controls the land farm development and Davis supposed that these are the endogenic forces which raise mountain but exogenic processes erode the higher regions and deposit in the lower areas. He divided the cycle of erosion in three stages, youthful stage where there is a steep slope. A steep slope means absolute relief is very high and relative relief also is very high due to vertical erosion by the rivers in this stage and here high vertical irregularity can be traced. But in mature stage there is moderate slope because the highest points are denuded by exogenic forces but the lower part is not being lowered or the valleys do not deepen their course. That's why the valleys start widening their courses and there is lateral erosion. In this stage slope becomes moderate and the rivers achieve graded profile means there is only transportation not weathering and erosion on large scale. In the third stage or old stage Davis proposed that their gentle slope develops because the highest points are reduced considerably. The rivers stop while deepening. Relative relief is minimum and in this last stage penny plain is developed. In penny plain 50% upper part is erosional, 50% lower part is depositional and the interflopes are reduced to monadnock having very gentle slope. Thus, this is the development of slope by Davis and on the basis of slope, the land farms in different stages are being identified but the last stage of penny plane is characterized with gentle slope and all the models given regarding the development of slope aim at the gentle slope. The second model is mountain or hill slope cycle model by L. C. King. L. C. King, L. C. King was a geomorphologist in the field of semi-arid region. In semi-arid region, we have studied a number of land farms like pediment, bajada and playa. Suppose in semi-arid region, this is hill or mountain and it has here a steep scarp slope, convex slope and it is rectilinear and concave slope. The same that was being studied in Davisian cycle of erosion. It is semi-arid that's why here on top or on crest there is no erosion rather creep. Why here is not erosion? Because it is semi-arid and rainfall is very scarce. Rainfall is insufficient here that's why due to thermal weathering the material is being weathered and according to gravity slope it slides down which is called creep. This is main process here on hill or mountain tops and second is scarp. This is scarp land of semi-arid region. Scarp means steep scarp means free face slope. Here rill and gully 
action or erosion can be seen. Why rill and gully? Because this area receives a little bit rainfall because wind is coming from this side from this playa region or some water body it will have some moisture which after ascending will cause here rain thus rill and gully action can be seen here and here ravine and badland topography is being developed one thing more here debris sliding what is debris debris means the material weathered from this hill top or hill scarp comes down according to gravity slope and this is called slope of repose on it this debris brought down from the mountain top or scarp rest repose this is called slope of repose and debris sliding takes place here but here in this sector that is rectilinear slope here it is called pediment it is pediment neither piedmont nor pediment pediment bajada playa you might have studied in semi arid region these are the land form this pediment is erosional surface by fluvial process in semi arid region in semi arid region and it has a smooth surface and here there is a linear and sheet flow because there is some water slope is of linear nature or rectilinear nature and sheet flow means when water is coming down along this rectilinear slope this is called sheet flow because there is no development of rill and gully as here in upper part thus here due to sheet flow minor creep can be seen so this is a model given by lc king and the aim of this model is to get this land eroded by the arid and semi arid and fluvial process this is being eroded transported along this slope by fluvial process and eolian process and deposited here in this low lying areas concave slope thus ultimately as davis presented in his model that at last there is peni plain some part erosional some depositional in the same way here also this culminates into erosional plain upper part is erosional and lower part is depositional and here process are both fluvial as well as eolian now third model is slope replacement model by walter pengs concept of geomorphic system or land form evolution you might have studied and he supposed that if there is a hilly or mountain tract then on it here a convex slope is developed thereafter free face slope then here rectilinear slope and at last concave slope is developed this slope is developed by exogenic or denudes process so here on mountainous region there will be weathering and erosion means denudation at fast rate and pank divided his model in five stages in which here you may observe that this convex slope decreases while this free face slope undergoes parallel retreat and when it is reduced this highland mountainous topography is reduced to its lowest it is called inselberg in davisian cycle it was monadnock but in pengs model it is inselberg and this material is transported through over this rectilinear slope which is called gravity slope because here the flowage of water as well as due to some amount of gradient gravity also works that's why the material slopes down 
and at last this is wash slope where the material is being deposited so this is model by peng regarding the slope development these are the three important slope development models but some other slope development models have been propounded by geomorphologists like fisher lehman model of slope evolution propounded in 1866 and 1933 respectively it means fisher presented his model in 1866 and lehman improved it or modified it in 1933 likewise woods also presented a model which is woods model of slope evolution in 1942 the concept of r a sevgier in 1952 is also of paramount significance and one more concept of an staller who studied drainage basin and observed that how the river system works the denudation process how the river system operates and denudes the topography and reduces it at last to rectilinear slope and at last process response model very important model by a young presented in 1963 this is also of paramount significance so these are a number of models of slope development propounded by a number of geomorphologists thus the main points of this topic is the definition of model and which are the factors affecting it slope elements and processes of slope development and especially three models propounded by davis l c king and pink